The Garden Isle of Kauai has always been a special place for me. Some of my best photos have been captured here, from multiple burning skies over Hanalei Pier to epic light on top of the Nepali coast. This place has certainly blessed me beyond measure. So back in February, I was more than excited to lead my photography gang on a workshop to Kauai. However, while I hoped for the best light for my friends, I wanted to approach this trip differently for myself. I wanted to photograph something unique and different. Instead of settling for the iconic, wide-angle, grand landscape, I vowed to look for the smaller, intimate details and try my best to capture them to the best of my ability. At stupid o'clock, I woke up to my alarm and headed straight to the airport. In addition to my personal challenge, this trip would also test my ability to lead a big group of 10 photographers out into the wilderness and hopefully all back home safely as well. How's it, bro? Gotta go with Garrett. Garrett with the Hawaiian Airlines status getting us on early. Early. Look at all these peasants getting on the plane late. After a quick Walmart run for essentials, we grabbed lunch at Uncle D's, which may or may not have haunted us later, then headed to Waimea Canyon to hunt for some rainbow shaved ice. I mean, actual rainbows, you know, to photograph. Oh my God. Oh my God, here comes the rain. But there's a rainbow. You get polarizer. What is this? Oh, too bad. <laughs> you can see them all better with the polarizer. Oh man, it is wet <laughs> right now. Anyways, good afternoon everybody. It's me, Spence Lee, back with another travel video. Actually, we started this video already. Anyways, we're here on the Garden Isle with this huge photography group. We'll do introductions in a little bit, but we're at the Waimea Canyon lookout and there's a rainbow coming in. So I just set my camera up for a quick time lapse and tips for shooting rainbows in the rain. You know, usually where there's rain and light, there's going to be a little bit of rainbow. You just gotta find, and this is like the perfect area for it because we've got rain off in the distance, sun out to the southwest of us. So it's like perfect for rainbow conditions. But anyways, tips for shooting in the rain. The rain is coming directly towards us. The wind is blowing in our face. So I can't really shoot at like narrow apertures like F8 or F16. You have to open it up to F2.8 or F4 or whatever, however wide your lens goes. So if you get rain on the front of your lens, then it's not gonna show up in the picture. It'll just be nice and blurred and you'll be focused on whatever is going on in the background. Another tip is to use a polarizer because as you twist that polarizer, you can actually exaggerate the rainbow's effect. So that's what we're doing now. We're just doing a quick time lapse as the, the light kind of pours down into the valley, giving us a little bit of a rainbow, a little bit of cloud movement, a little bit of light. Man, it's like whipping rain and wind. It's just absolutely crazy, but it's so beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Ooh, 
there's some light starting on that side, on that waterfall. There's the rainbow. I don't know if you guys can see with this ND filter on, but whatever. And that's what we're talking about. Absolutely glorious. The light just popped out, getting a nice rainbow going across the canyon. Unfortunately, we're just in the wrong lookout, but I'm gonna try to round everybody up and head down the road, get to a better spot so we can catch the rainbow. We'll maybe let this rainbow develop, get a nice time lapse of it, and then head out. But you know, this this lookout is nice, but we could do better. We could do much, much better. All right, so we're out here at the better lookout. Right now, we're not getting a whole lot of light, but hopefully as the light kind of pops in and out of the clouds, rainbows should appear behind us. And this is, this is where you want to be because we get a rainbow on the right side, and then we're very, very close to the waterfall on this side as well. So, all right, so right now the lighting is not doing anything crazy. No rainbows, but it's coming as soon as the, the light clears. So I think we're going to do switch to the 100 to 400 and take some telephoto shots of all the water crashing on this side out in the distance maybe get hopefully get at least a little bit of light um, but i think the movement of the water with the wind just creates some very very nice textures and uh yeah we'll see how that turns out but switch to the one to 400 and when the rainbow inevitably i think comes out then we'll switch to the wide angle Ugh. Just a little bit of light on the waterfall right now, so we're punched in to 400 mil, just getting the waterfall kind of sweeping to the side. It's like a sideways waterfall right now because of the wind. So everyone pretty much packed up because the light went away. But we have all this rain coming down and filling the valley. So I started my time lapse, put my rain cover on, shooting wide open. And I'm hoping that we just get a hint of light that pops through and then creates a beautiful, beautiful rainbow because that would be incredible. And that would be like the ideal perfect weather that we have. Because we got the mist, we got the rain. You know, the, the lighting conditions look good for a possible rainbow. We just don't have the light. So we're just missing that last piece that we're wait just waiting on. Despite my high hopes, we did not catch any rainbows at the better lookout, but I was happy that the shots that we captured earlier with the telephoto made the most of the conditions that were present and weren't just the wide angle shot from the lookout. All right, so we are up here at the top of the hill, just kind of scouting it out. I took a quick peek over the ledge and there is a nice view of the ridge. So I'm thinking we start hiking down, we might not have enough time to make it all the way down for sunset, but at least we'll be able to get down to a level where we're below the clouds. We can see the mountain range and then take a few pictures. We just, we just gonna go and we gonna see what happens. Just try them out and yeah, go from there. Ooh, waterfall action. Oh my Lord, pinch me, I'm dreaming. I know I said that I'm gonna try and not to take the iconic shot, 
but if the light happens and we get light across the scene, I, I kind of have to. We've got a waterfall coming down on this side and then waterfalls in the valley and then all these ridges down here. And then the sunset is actually going to be behind us. So we'll see if we actually get any light, but that's going to be one hell of a panorama if we're able to pull that off. But whew, this is the kind of stuff that dreams are made out of for sure. Sorry, I'm not filming. It's hard to do two things at once because there's just these gusts of winds that kind of just come out of nowhere and then just leaving the camera on a tripod would be a very bad idea. So swap in between the two cameras, but got an incredible view behind us, but getting a hint of light on the corner, just that bottom corner, but that's about it, not much else. So I'm just kind of watching and waiting. We had this beautiful mist here in the valley. So I did a couple panoramas. You just got to kind of wait it out and just see what happens. But yeah, this is, this is absolutely incredible. Whew. See right here where my lens is, you guys probably can't see it, but there's a tree that's shrouded in mist and it's just hanging on to the ridge line. It's like, looks like it's just about to fall, but you can, we can really only make it out because there's a cloud behind the, the, the tree. Because if there were no clouds, it'd just be a tree against you know, the dark mountain face. So I'm just using the 100 to 400 to kind of snipe some shots of it. But I think this shot might be the best shot that we've taken all day or my most favorite shot that we've taken all day because it's not the classic shot it's unique it's different it tells a story you know the classic shot is nice and it's always good to just grab it but then after that you're gonna try and hunt for some different things and this is exactly what i was hoping for when i made plans to come back because we've done all the classic shots on our own and uh done them pretty well i think so unless the light does something better than what we've got before you know it's not going to outdo it so this is something that I could totally get excited about. See, now that the mist is gone, the tree is right here, but now that the mist is gone, you can't even make it out because it's all covered in ridge line. So, man, we just witnessed a beautiful, beautiful moment. I was super stoked with the moody shot with the tree, but let's be honest, that was a pretty disappointing sunset. We warmed our spirits with some kawaii ramen and then made the long drive over to Princeville to rest in our massive Airbnb. All right. Fancy dancy Airbnb booked by Jaja Tour right now. This is the bathroom that I just, of course, this has got to be my first stop. But look at this shower. Go open the door. We go run around the whole entire place now. There's one bedroom. Okay. Washer dryer. Second bedroom. Garrett's bedroom. Oh, 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 oh. Doing house tour, house tour, house tour. Staircase. Freaking living room, freaking ridiculous, bro. Look how look how much space I have to run around. So stupid. Get one, get one outdoors indoors kind of thing. Oh my god, this is crazy. Jaja can book all my Airbnbs from here on out. Okay, we're going upstairs. And there's one bedroom up here for the host, or not the host, but the people that booked the Airbnb Jaja then. Holy schnitzels. This is nuts. So there was a bird on, you're gonna tell us about the bird on Kalepa. There's a bird on the cliff, okay, and the fucking hilarious.
<laughs> With what felt like only a few seconds of shut eye, a few of us idiots headed out into the dark of night oh, yeah. in attempts to photograph the Milky Way. Woo. Good morning, everybody. It's me, Spencer Lee, back with another video. Welcome back to day two of the Kauai workshop. And uh, after finishing our hike up on the Nepali coast, we actually got some pretty decent shots with the, the tree in the mist. Like that was, that was pretty nice. But we drove all the way back to Princeville and uh, you know, took a quick nap, one to two hour nap, if any. And uh, woke up at 3 a.m. to try and do Milky Way out in uh, at the Hanalei Pier. But when we were, we got out there, we drove out and tried to shoot, tried to take a couple shots, and then was <laughs> absolutely sucked in with rain, clouds, and everything. So we decided, okay, maybe we'll give it a try, drive down to our sunrise location, and see if we can get Milky Way from there. Maybe the weather might change, and of course, the weather did change. There's still some clouds coming in and out, but the Milky Way is. Milky Way course was somewhat visible earlier. I'm not too sure if it's visible now, but we're gonna try and, I'm just doing a time lapse right now. We're gonna try and see if we can get anything in the shot. But yeah, happy we made the, the audible to come to our sunrise location. So looking back at the time lapse, I think we only got Milky Way right at the very beginning and then everything else was kind of just clouds and like a little bit of the core came out, but like mostly clouds. So the sun should be rising still out in this direction. So what I could do is a day to night time lapse and uh, or a night to day time lapse actually. And that I think that would be pretty cool. And I'm just debating about whether or not I actually want to go with the effort and do it. But I've also never actually, I mean, I've shot here before during the midday, but I've never actually shot sunrise here. So I'm thinking I might want to try and actually get some like flows and like a different composition. And because the clouds are rolling in, they look pretty nice. They look like they could catch some color coming in. So I'm like, ah, I might want to try to find some a little bit better of a composition. I kind of only set this one up just to get the Milky Way core with the river flowing through. And it's a good Milky Way composition, but I think without the Milky Way in it, it's just kind of like, eh, it's like a snapshot, you know? So I think we're going to give it a try and uh, try and find something else once the sun gets a little bit brighter. Oh yeah, this is what we're talking about. This is the kind of stuff we want. All these drains coming down, looking epic. Looking absolutely epic. We've got the crew out here. Woo! Let's give this shot a try. So I'm really trying to make an effort to shoot some more of these intimate landscapes because, you know, to be honest, this trip, this trip's weather has been horrible. <laughs> so we got to try and shoot something that's less weather dependent. Enough of the big wide landscape, we're going to try and do something a little bit different. So as the sun kind of rose and as it got a little bit brighter, I noticed that we weren't going to get a whole lot of color in the sky. You know, the sky looks pretty dull and gray uneventful so i figured i'd give up on the shot facing the sunrise and just kind of figure out what interested me so i walked around and came to this side of the beach and i'm looking at the coast and i'm seeing all these green rocks just getting splashed and hit by water so what i think i'm going to try and do is get the 100 to 400 out telephoto shot and get the waves hitting the coast hitting those green rocks and creating like a long exposure. So it's kind of like an intimate long exposure flow shot in a way. But we're gonna try that, see how it goes. 
You know, each approach to landscape photography, whether it's the big grand landscapes or the intimate small scenes, there's no wrong way to, to do it. But when the conditions are not favorable for the big landscape, that's when I tend to look smaller, look towards the more intimate scenes. Um, you know, if the light is absolutely burning and kicking off, of course I'm going to shoot the grand landscape and that's going to be my shot. But, you know, in situations like this where the weather is trash, <laughs> we're going to try something a little different. All right. Oh look, we're setting a trend, I think. <laughs> a rainbow, there's a rainbow up there. I don't know if you guys can see. That's pretty cool. I gotta get, get, get some better foreground for that. Let me give it a try. This really is the land of rainbows, I tell you. All right, come with me. We're going to get a little bit more flow in the foreground here. There we go. Right next to Ida and Lummy. Meet again. There we go. Got flow coming in through the foreground with the rainbow in the back. Here comes the light for the wide angle shot that we had earlier. All right, 360, turn around, go back this side. <laughs> Running around like crazy out here today, all over the place. But there's the light. We finally get the shot that we were working on before with the cove. Okay, well, <laughs> the sun is rising. The light rays are kind of gone already, but uh, my uh, battery is pretty much dead on the A1, which is probably a sign that uh, I've done a lot of shooting. And uh, yeah, we'll see what this today's adventures have in store for us. I'm not too sure what we have planned because you know the weather is kind of iffy. It's like sunny slash cloudy in certain areas, and you know it's just it's just weird. This weather is just weird. So we'll see. But I'm glad that we were able to get out this morning and get a little bit of Milky Way, even though it wasn't the best. And then we are able to, you know, we tried the wide shots, it didn't work out, so we switched to those intimate shots. Those came out pretty good. And then, you know, the, the light ended up happening and we got our wide shots in the end. So it worked out, it worked out pretty well. But yeah, we'll see you guys when we head out with our cameras next. And I have no idea when that is, but pretty good morning. So I went spot one rainbow driving down into Hanalei for breakfast and uh, I pointed them out and Moss was like, just book them, book them to the pier. So we're at the pier, rainbow is starting to fade off, but we were able to get a couple of wide angle shots of it. Man, after a little chase, we just sprinted our way from the car all the way down here and then boom. Got that rainbow shot. I don't know if it's going to be any good because they're, it's literally just a rainbow and a wide angle scene. I probably should have gone to the just caught the rainbow just in time. Woo! Yeah.
After shooting the rainbow at Hanalei Pier, we rested up at the Airbnb, then went out in the afternoon for some wildlife photography. Hi, after one quick nap, we're going to walk to the golf course, take pictures of some nene geese. You see them over there. The afternoon light made for some great backlit shots. There was even this cute little ohana of nene geese and I was lucky enough to photograph this little guy running down the slope. back to the Airbnb, we spotted some albatross across the field. With up to an 11 foot wingspan, they blocked out the sun for the brief moment that they flew above us. I was able to capture some epic moments of them in flight. Landed back into the field, then waddled their way over to us almost as if they were asking for some close up portraits. Albatross took off, I spotted a single Eva bird overhead and was able to snag a few photos of him too. What a successful wildlife shoot. These are definitely not the iconic shots of Kauai. This is the kind post wildlife successful mission reward. We arrived back at the Airbnb to find Mal sleep jamming to some Kauai music. After rallying the troops awake, we headed out to Ka Beach for sunset. Morning, girl. <laughs> 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 All 
All right, so here we go. Last sunset of the trip. <laughs> we're out, out here at Ke'e. Oh, get one rainbow behind us. Oh, got to shoot the Kalo. Oh my God. Got to get Kalo in the foreground. Where's one nice looking one? Right here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, sorry. I, we're taking break once. Because rain is coming, but we're going to take, my, take our shot real quick. Woo! Oh my goodness, we're really putting to test the weather ceiling on these Sony lenses and bodies on this trip. <laughs> it's just like the fourth or fifth time we're just getting caught in a downpour. But anyways, we're out here on Ka Beach, or at Ka Beach, walking to Ka Beach <laughs> to shoot sunset. It's looking pretty clear on the horizon, so I'm hoping that since we're back here during the winter time, we get some backlit waves shooting telephoto in front of the Nepali coast. There she is, the Nepali coastline. Now all we gotta hope for is some backlit wave action. We should be good. Who knows, we'll see what we get. Things are looking pretty swell. All right, here's what I'm thinking. We got all these clouds, so the glow alongside the coast might look really, really nice. So I think I'm gonna set this one up for a time lapse. And then we'll be shooting our 100 to 400 shots with our backlit waves uh, and stuff with the 100 to 400 and the A1. And then we'll probably be vlogging with the iPhone, so that'll be fun. I haven't done that in a while, set up time lapse and all that, but it'll be a great way to end it off, get some light on the coastline, and yeah, it's just gonna be absolutely beautiful. Just always love it here. We'll see, hopefully, we'll get lucky with some wave action. My microphone stopped working for this shoot, so enjoy these epic waves and epic light that we got for this sunset. was absolutely fantastic and while the waves weren't crazy big they allowed me to capture some unique and interesting shots after another few seconds of shut eye we somehow found ourselves 
driving across the island back to Waimea Canyon to photograph the Milky Way. Ooh. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to day three of the Kauai workshop. We are out here at Waimea Canyon shooting the Milky Way. Just got wide angle time lapse, got the whole crew lined up taking pretty much the exact same shot, but we don't care. It's just absolutely incredible. We've got the uh, Waipo'o Falls in the foreground and then the Milky Way rising on the right side. Yeah, I might try to take some shots with this one, the 20 millimeter 1.8 and maybe do a, a pano and see how that turns out. But man, it's just looking absolutely beautiful this morning and just unbelievable. We got so lucky with these relatively clear skies uh, out here this morning. All right, I go show you, I go show you the pano that we went just to. So we started off, it was a little bit cloudy. So these shots are at um, 30 seconds F1.8 ISO, 12800. And if I brand them up, you can see the 30 second exposure gives us some nice clean foreground uh, action here. Hang on, let me lower that. There's a little bit of the core, but thought that those stars are blurry if we blur, if we go in nice and tight, you see how traily they are. So the reason for we get this shot is just so that we can get nice detail in the foreground. We just did one panel all the way across. Once the clouds cl cleared out from the Milky Way core, when start taking shots of the core, five seconds, 1.8, same ISO. But then these stars are all nice and sharp, right? If we zoom in, those stars are nice and sharp. And essentially we just do one panorama all the way back across. I was waiting for the clouds to clear a little bit more and eventually they cleared right about here. So pan, start from here, pan, pan, pan. Nice Milky Way core. Took a couple shots of just the core mature, just get them just right. Like there, that's good. And then pow, and that's my video. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful panel. Hopefully this stitches well and comes out good, but wow. Just amazing tonight. Capturing my Milky Way panel, I grabbed a few more seconds of shut eye in the warmth of the car and let my time lapses roll until blue hour. Ooh. All right, so we back out here for sunrise, exact same spot. That's probably it. Maybe do one time lapse just in case some lights come through. Some light comes through, but <sighs> beautiful, absolutely insane view. Unfortunately, I don't think any light is going to come through. The clouds keep rising with the sun, so yeah, enjoy these. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the time lapses. We'll see what else this day has to offer. We still have a full day of, I guess, traveling related kind of things. Got to pack up the Airbnb and yeah, we'll, we'll see what else happens today. But this is a very good Mercury mission and a pretty decent sunrise as well. Is this even real life right now? What in the world? That's so cool. Hell yeah for that time lapse. Awesome. This isn't even real, what the heck? Oh my gosh, is this even real life? Whew, so we were starting to all pack up and Darwin, Lummy, them had already left as well. 
and then boom, all this light comes out of nowhere into the valley. I can't even express into words. You can't even see them on camera, but it's absolutely incredible. Super unreal, crazy. I'm trying to just adjust my camera setting and cannot even just show you guys everything that's going on back there. But we have light rays coming through the clouds. At one point in time, it was coming down, splitting the ridge in half, and it was just insane. I'm so happy we waited the extra like five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. I'll take whatever late fee it is, but that shot was money. I've been keep the time lapse rolling. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. And it happened for like a split second only. I think I was able to just get a little bit of it on the iPhone B-roll, but the rest is just, oh God, unreal. Absolutely unreal. After packing it up at the Airbnb, we headed to our final location, the classic and iconic Wailua Falls. Once again, I remembered my commitment and refrained from capturing the wide angle shot and focused on some smaller details in the waterfall. Also was lucky enough to capture some kwaikea or white-tailed tropic birds flying around the waterfall. Man, this trip sure was fruitful for wildlife photography. that we were tired after this trip would probably be an understatement. This trip was probably one of the more physically challenging, not just due to the hikes, but also due to the lack of sleep. However, despite not getting the most epic conditions, our focus on the smaller and more intimate landscapes paid off, and photographically, this trip was very successful. Despite a few bumps in the road, our group functions very well. I left this trip longing to spend more time with these people and of course to do more sleepless photography missions in the future. <laughs>